Hi there, I'm Elizabeth with LA's Handcrafted Jewelry and welcome to my channel where I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for those looking to learn the art of wire wrapping and wire weaving. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create this crescent moon pendant. It features, of course, a moon cabochon, but as well as a faceted or a flat back teardrop cabochon that will be hanging just above and leaving some negative space. It'll also be using square wire and round wire to create this piece. If you do not have square wire, that is absolutely okay. You can use round wire for this project. Um, but it's a really fun piece and really great for the upcoming season. Also, I wanted to tell you about the new Aurelia pendant, which is a Tree of Life pendant. I've had a lot of requests about Tree of Life's, so I have finally made one. It's available on my website today, and it is 32% off today and tomorrow. So you'll want to check that out um, while the sale is going on. By the way, that includes all other written tutorials as well. Also, just a reminder, if you are signed up for the Artisan Tutorial Vault, you already have access to this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about the vault, you can uh, check that out below in the description as well. So let's go ahead and get ready to jump into our video. But before we do, let's say a special thank you to Kaz Dance. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Kaz Dance for sponsoring this video. Kaz Dance is a gem seller located in the United States and has a variety of high quality stones. Search by gemstone, shape, size, quality, and more to find the perfect stone for your project. I've left a link in the description below to their website as well as their Facebook page so that you can stay up to date on any new arrivals or sales. All right, to get started, these are the materials and tools you need. Um, for this particular stone, I'm going to be needing about 14 inches, um, four segments of 14 inch 20 gauge square wire. And these are dead soft. You're also going to need um, three segments of 20 gauge wire. These are cut into eight inch segments. And this is going to be for my fasted stone. You're also going to need 28 gauge copper wire for weaving. This is round wire. You'll of course need a moon shaped cabochon. And I'm using a, um, a vintage Swarovski faceted teardrop here. You can use um, a flat back cabochon as well if you don't want to work with a facet, um, but this is what I have. For tools, you're going to need chain nose or flat nose pliers, round nose pliers, and flush cutters. You may also need a pin vise. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find one of these. This is really great for twisting your square wire. You'll also need a ruler and a Sharpie. Now to start, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my wire here. I'm gonna mark the center of this. I know that it is 14 inches. So starting at a zero, moving it over. So I'll need to mark it at the seven inch mark over here. Make sure that they line up. Now I'm going to need to weave a little bit on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my stone and set it here and just kind of figure out um, how much I want to weave. So I want to be able to support about that much. So I'll need to weave probably a little less than an inch or so, or maybe about an inch making sure it's the same on either side. While I'm here, I'm also going to mark the center of my other three wires that I have set aside for my facet. Straighten these out a little bit with my fingers. I know that these are about eight inches, so I'll need to mark it four inches. And probably only half an inch or so of weaving on that. I'm just setting that aside. Now I wanna twist my wire before I start. So this is one of my longer segments of wire. This is the 14 inch segment of 20 gauge wire. So I'm just gonna feed it into my pin vise. I'm gonna grab one of my pliers over here. I have my flat nose pliers here. And I'm just gonna hold the other end in place with it and begin to twist the pin vise. And this is gonna twist the wire for me, so this is gonna add a decorative touch. This isn't necessary for the project, but if you wanna have a nice little bit of bling um, or sparkle to your piece, you can certainly do this. Twisted wire, as you can see, is very sparkly. 
Now, once my wire is twisted, I'm just going to set that aside. And now I'm going to grab one of the 8 inch segments for my fasted stone and do the same to it. Just feeding it into my vise and tightening it. And then holding the other end with my pliers while I twist with the pin vise. Now once my wires are all twisted, it's now time to start weaving. So I'm going to start with the bulk here. So I'm going to grab my 14 inch segments of wire and put them together. At this point, you can load them into a spring clamp if you have one or a ring clamp. Um, that's what I'm going to do here once I get all of my lines lined up. And diagonal. Just stick them in there. Now this twisted piece is going to be the front and I'm going to be working from the back to the front. So the twisted side should be on the top as you're looking at it. Now I'm going to grab some 28 gauge weaving wire and feed it in between my back two wires. Feeding in between the back two wires like so, and then wrapping that back wire three times to start the weave. like so and that three um that three wrap can be just outside the sharpie mark that is okay i'm gonna grab my finger protector here since i get blisters fairly easily all right from there i'm going to basically start a modified sumac weave so that would be once around two wires back two wires scooting that down and then bringing that in between the two woven wires, like so. And then around the next two wires, one time. And then in between those two base wires. And then up and around the top two base wires, one time. And then finish off this here. Wrap it around once around the top base wire. Now at this point you can grab your flat nose pliers or your chain nose pliers and just scrunch that wire down and compress it just a tad. And we're just going to continue that weave until we reach the other side, but I'll show you again and see if I can zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to wrap around bottom base wire one time and up and around the next two base wires. And in between those two base wires, then up and around the next two base wires, so the center two base wires, then in between those two base wires, then up and around the top two base wires, and then in between those two base wires, and up and around the top base wire. Just like so. Grabbing your pliers and scrunching them down as needed. And I'm going to continue that modified sumac weave until I reach this further end here on the Sharpie mark. Now when you've reached the end, um, just go ahead and wrap the weaving wire around the bottom base wire three times to secure the weave. And at this point you can just do a little pull and twist. Make sure that it's all nice and flush and just go ahead and pull it out of the spring clamp. Do the same on the opposite side with your tailpiece. Pull and twist. And that completes that side, that piece for the frame. Now we're just going to do the same thing with the fasted stone. So we're just going to get them ready here. Make sure all the lines line up. Feed it into the clamp. Make sure you start on this side.
This one's only three wires, so it shouldn't take as long. And it's only for about a quarter to half an inch, depending on the size of your stone. So begin by wrapping around the bottom base wire three times. Then around the next two base wires. One time. And in between those two base wires, then up and over around the top two base wires, then in between, one time, down and around, and again starting over until you reach the other sharpie mark. Now after finishing, I've wrapped three times around my base wire, secure the weave, and now I'm just going to go ahead and pull and twist, pulling that off this out of my clamp. Do the same with the tailpiece. There we have it. We have our two frames that are all woven and now start to put, it's time to start putting them together. So now I'm just going to lay my stone there. Let's straighten these wires out a little bit since they're still a little funky from weaving. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and begin shaping it around the stone. So center, setting it at the center of the stone, I'm going to create, begin to pull it upward. Same on the opposite side. about what it should look like and these twisted wires are actually going to go over the surface of the stone just slightly and then the back will be bent, uh, bent inward but before we do that we need to figure out where they're going to intersect at the top because the teardrop is going to sit up above the moon I'm just bending this down and at this point you can grab your teardrop if you want and just kind of see where it's going to sit You can see I'm kind of holding it here with my players. So this is going to be an idea of where I want the, the wires to intersect so I can bend them upward. Just making sure that this is a center still. I think I want them to bend about there. Just bending them up with my pliers. That's a good spot for it. Now at this point, you can use the Sharpie that we have to bend the shorter segments here for the teardrop. Oops. Make sure they intersect somewhere. This still might be a little small for my, my teardrop. Actually, that's about perfect. Let's keep going until they intersect somewhere. That's about where I want to bend them. Holding it and bending out. Holding, then bending out. Sticking my teardrop in there, making sure that it fits, and it does. And so now we can move on to the next part. So now that everything fits like it's supposed to, we're going to go ahead and start putting this together. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that these are all sitting next to each other like they're supposed to on either side. Do the same, make sure the same is happening here with the teardrop and I bend that up a bit more. Making sure they're all sitting nicely next to each other. 
so that when they come together, they should be sitting next to each other. Now we're just going to feed that in here, make sure that they sit. Before I stick them in there, though, for their official spots, I'm going to grab my weaving wire and wrap it around one of the back base wires here for the, um, the larger frame. Wrap it around three times onto the back base wire. Slide it down a little bit. Now I'm going to set this teardrop shape in here, making sure that the twisted is facing the front. And just kind of hold them together best that I can, making sure that they are sitting somewhat neatly next to each other. Now I'm going to take that weaving wire. Now it's running all over the place. And I'm going to wrap it around all of these base wires to secure them together. I'm going to do that probably about five times because we're holding quite a few wires together here. And once those are all wrapped together, I'm going to secure that to one of the back base wires again. So wrap it around three times. One, two, three. Now all the wires are together. Now at this point we can go ahead and start putting our stones in the frame. So sticking them in there best you can. Bringing around on the other side and I'm going to bring this wire up. And bring this wire up. I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. Bring this wire up into the stone to hold it in place. Do the same on the opposite side. Now we're going to have to make sure that these side <laughs> wires are holding it in place. As you can see, I haven't pulled off my weaving yet, wire yet either. So now it's time for the teardrop. So I'm going to squeeze this front part together a little bit, make sure that there's plenty of surface area coming in contact with the stone. Once it's got enough contact at the front, let me flip more on this side. There we go. Then flip it over. And I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers again, separating these two wires. And just bend this wire back in. Whoops. Bend the wire back in. And gouge that a little bit. You can fix that with um, sandpaper. Okay, bend that up. All right. So my stones are now set. They're sitting in there. They are a tad loose, but that is okay because as we continue to weave, um, there's going to be a, some swirls and loops that are going to help secure everything.
Now it's time to separate wires a little bit so we can determine which wires are going to be used for the bale and decorative accents. So the longer wires I'm setting to each side, so they're going to be even on each side. So that's in three over here. These two front ones here I'm going to use it as the bale, so I've got them set aside. Um, another decorative wire over here, so the longer wires are off one side and then off to the other side. Um, the remaining shorter wires are also going to go off to each side. There, I believe there should be six on either side. And then two at the center for the bale. So we're just going to bring this wire back through. Leave the bale. So I'm going to separate, separate these wires a little bit into like a V shape. And we're going to do a figure eight weave to weave this. So I'm going to start by wrapping once around and then twice around that bottom wire and up and around uh, underneath and then over the opposite wire. Bring it down. Then so then under and over the opposite wire once, twice, then under and over the opposite wire, once, and twice. And we're just going to do that for a little bit until we reach maybe about half an inch or so. All right, so once I've reached this point or so, this is about half an inch, I'm going to bend these wires in just slightly almost creating like a diamond shape. Grab my flat nose pliers and bend that out. Same on the other side. And I'm going to continue weaving until I reach the top. So this part gets a little bit more tricky. I just use my index finger to kind of hold down these wires as I'm weaving. You also don't want to pull too much as you're weaving because then you're going to pull these together and the spacing is going to become less and less even. So you can see I'm holding with my index finger, holding that wire down, and then bringing the wire over and just gently wrapping it, not pulling too tight. And this point you want to go slow. So holding with my index finger up and over, securing the wire, not pulling too tight, holding the wire, doing the same on the opposite side. And just continue until you reach the top. Now I finished wrapping by uh, wrapping around the, the bottom base wire three times. And now we're going to go ahead and begin creating the bale. At this point you can use the Sharpie or you can just use your thumb. I'm just going to use my thumb. And bend these wires down. I have a tail piece over here I need to get rid of. All right, now we're going to go ahead and continue bending these downward. Where it's right where I want it now, so I'm going to grab my weaving wire. Maybe. And I'm going to wrap it around the the bulk wires here as well as the veil wires just to really secure it. Sorry, I have to do it a little awkwardly since there's a camera here. I'm wrapping it around three times around one of these wires to secure it. Like so. And I'm just going to do a little pull and twist. Get off that tail piece, move it out of the way. Now at this point, I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and feed this wire through to the other side. The same on the opposite wire. Okay. 
Let me sure they're all the way through. Now, once they are all the way through, I'm going to bend or curl them kind of this way. We're going to add them to the decorative bit here. Out as well. And this is twisted wire, so it's going to be a little harder to manipulate. Be aware of that. And trim these off just a little bit. Now I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and create swirls at the end. Do the same on the opposite side. Doing your best to mirror the first one. And see, I'm using my thumb a lot to kind of help hold the wire. This off a little bit since I don't like how it's looking. There's a couple decorative swirls on either side and we can adjust them more if we need to. But now we can move on to adding some more decorative things here. So I start with the one of these bare base wires, I think. And I want to use one of the longer ones. So I'm bringing it up and over. That over top of the bale and next to the swirl here. And then I'm going to bring one of these um, twisted wires up and over. And then another bare base wire next to it. Let's get that over a little bit because I'm going to do the same on the opposite side to mirror the first side. And you can see I haven't secured these yet, so that way I can adjust them as needed. We're grabbing the nearest base wire on the left side now. Using my thumb to gently curve it and bring it over. Trying to mirror the first side. Should be about the same as this first one here. Then bringing the twisted wire next to that, curving it with my thumb, and bring it over. And then another base wire next to that. And I have one extra wire. So what I'm going to do with this longer wire is I'm just going to twist it. You can also use your pin vise, which actually I might do. It'll be a little easier on camera. Stick it in there. Tighten. Which way was I twisting? Definitely that way. Twist the wire. Do the same to the other side. Now once both the wires are twisted, I'm going to bring it over top of the final wire here. And like I did with the other wires. The same on the opposite side. Bring over. Using my thumb to help curve the wire. So once we have our wires where we want them, just 
still working on mine here. Make sure that they're evenly spaced. Now we're going to start, um, you can create some extra curls and swirls, which I think I'm going to do. Um, I think. So there's going to be a couple here that I'm just going to um, secure to the frame. So I'm going to curve them upward and towards the back. Like so the same on the opposite side. And I'm going to trim off the excess wire here and tuck them in. Grab my chain nose pliers and feed them backward. Do the same on the opposite side. Notice it's actually a little easier <laughs> for tucking in multiple wires. Okay. Now that those are tucked in, um, it's not quite as high as I'd like. I'm going to bring this over. And rather than swirl it, I'm just going to bring it out, then up and over the stone. This is going to better help secure the stone in place and towards the back. Then do the same on the opposite side. bringing it through. You can do one, uh, one wire at a time too, if that's a little easier for you. I'm bringing it back towards the back. Now at this point you can turn the wires and tuck them in behind the curves. Do so gently so you don't damage the stone or the frame. I'll just do the same thing on the opposite side. At this point, I'm going to twist this back wire here. I'm going to twist both back base wires that are left. They should be the shorter wires that are remaining. Twisty, twisty. The same on the opposite side. Dividing those wires, taking the back wire and twisting it. Now I'm going to bring these over. So we're curving. Over the swirl. Okay. 
maybe upward. Yeah, square wire is tw tricky, so I'm um, going to try and untwist some of this wire a little bit first. Of course, every time, the more you work with it, the harder it gets, so just be aware of that. So now I'm going to trim off this wire here, trim the wire here, grab my round nose pliers, and gently create some swirls here at the end of these wires. I'm using my flat nose pliers to kind of correct the swirl a little bit. Now we're just going to do the same on the opposite side. Bringing this wire down. And over front. And back in. Follow with the twisted wire here. Starting with your thumb or your thumbnail. And just trim and curl. I'm not going to trim very much off of this one because I don't have a lot there. So, holding in place with our thumb as we use the swirl or create the swirl with our round nose pliers. And going the opposite way with the other one. And at this point, you can adjust as needed. If you want to make it a little bit more even or a little bit more symmetrical. Once you kind of get it in a place where you like it, at this point, we need to make sure that these swirls don't go anywhere. So I'm going to grab some. You can use some scrap wire at this point if you have any from your bin. I'm just gonna grab a couple segments here. And I'm going to wrap the weaving wire around or through both wires here. Oops. Here, I'll, I'll give you a better view here. So you can see I've captured the top swirl and this portion of the swirl. I'm going to take one of these ends of the weaving wire and wrap it around the frame three times to secure it, at least to secure one end. So maybe you can find the end of it. <laughs>
All right. So one end is now secured to the back of the frame. And then we have this other piece here. And we're going to bring it up and through the other swirl and back in between these two wires and the swirl back down. Let's pull until it's whoops <laughs> too tight. Not the end of the world. Just pull it back out. Now, when I say too much tension, that's what I mean. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do. All right. I'm going to bring that back through and I'm going to wrap it around this base wire here three times to secure it. So what I'm going to need to do, grab my chain nose pliers and pull this out just a tad. Create a gap for me. Making sure not to pull too tight because we don't want to pull that swirl anymore in towards the back of the frame. And one more time for good measure. Pull and twist. And then with the same with the other side, pull and twist. Now the swirls are secure. Do the same on the opposite side. Also decided that I want to add a copper bead, I think, to the top of this uh, faceted stone. So I fed it through my wire. And if you have room, like I do, which is a gap, I, kind of like a little gap I want to fill, I'm just going to feed this through the wire, like so. And then I'm going to secure it to the back by wrapping it around these back wires. Just wrapping around three times on either side. And do a little, well, actually, I'm going to leave that there for just a second until I do this side. And you might need to play with them a little bit to make a gap. Just make sure you uh, fix that when you're done so that way the stone is still sitting like it's supposed to. And two and three. And then we're gonna do a little pull and twist and twist and make sure these are adjusted this tone's not loose anymore and now we have a cute little bead there as well and here's the finished piece and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below as I try to get to them as quickly as I can. You're also welcome to sign up for the Learn to Weave newsletter where I keep you up to date as far as new written tutorials, videos, vlogs, sales, and so much more. Also, just a reminder about the new Aurelia pendant tutorial. Um, it is available on my website, 32% off today and tomorrow. Just adding by adding it to your cart, it should automatically populate the discount code. And if you are already part of the Artisan Tutorial Vault, you already have access to this. So you can just check that out in the description below if you're interested in learning more about that as well. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and until next time, happy weaving.